which was a report on violence against trans women in South Africa. And the project had some really concrete objectives, um, which were to highlight the human rights violations against trans women, uh, to disseminate information on the issues around violence, to create strategies to prevent and combat violence against transgender women in South Africa, and also to create tools that we can use in our human rights advocacy um, on the continent and more globally. The methodology of the project was really very straightforward. We had uh, three focus group discussions, which um, one was held in East London, in the Eastern Cape, the other in Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, and Cape Town in the Western Cape. And why we chose those three provinces was because of the unique mix between rural and urban situations. We also had in-depth interviews um, with trans women around very particular issues. One such issue is the health situation, the economic situation, uh, access to justice, and um, access to um, the economy of South Africa. Um, and that all described the qualitative approach of the project. On the quantitative project, we focused really on gathering numbers. And although we had a very small uh, survey, we felt that it was a very unique opportunity to launch this um, much needed discussion in South Africa. We also had 15 respondents from um, chapter nine organizations and other civil society organizations and these included, but were not limited to, the South African Human Rights Commission, uh, the Commission on Gender Equality, the Public Protector, and um, so on. I want to present to you um, some of the key findings of the research. And this first finding was, was really, really important to us because um, it is key for us to understand the way in which trans women define themselves in the African context. Of course, throughout the continent, we have a varied context, and we have different names by which we are called, and we have different ways in which we identify ourselves. Um, so not everybody is taking on the label of uh, trans women. So we asked our participants whether they identify as trans women, and 79% said yes, and 13% said, you know, Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And 8% said, I'm a woman. And they just left it at that. Given South Africa's history of racial segregation, it was very important for us to bring this intersection into the research to kind of find out how is it that previously disadvantaged groups, um, such as trans women, for example, living in rural areas, how are they experiencing being trans in South Africa? You will find, interestingly, uh, given the challenged context of trans women generally in South Africa, that 48% of the sample um, were black, 20% um, were colored or biracial, 28% of the sample respondents were white, and 4% were other. Um, we put other in there, not as a way of um, placing people on the margin, but it was important for them to self-identify. And the assumption that we've come to is that the other could be um, Indian, it could be Asian, it could be trans women from other African continents, uh, from several countries. The education level, um, as you can see, 30% completed tertiary studies, which I find hard to believe. 26% um, completed high school, and there's a dropout rate of 20%, 22%. And <clears throat> I, I must flag something here. In the dropout rate, we had a very long conversation with um, my colleague who conducted the research with me about using appropriate terms because um, trans women don't drop out from schools. We are forced out of these systems. And that is what I strongly wanted to highlight. And so everywhere I present this research, I flag that as an issue. Um, 
Homelessness is a huge issue for trans women in South Africa. As you can see, many trans women are not economically viable. It means that they stay with parents. That's the 42% that you see up there. That kind of context further places trans women at risk because often the situation is that they cannot fully express their gender identity. In the Eastern Cape, it was of particular importance to explore one single issue that has relevance to culture and family, and that was the issue of cultural circumcision. Um, in the Eastern Cape, circumcision is not just about sexual health. Um, it's also about a process of coming into a cultural identity that has to do with masculinity, which is in conflict with trans women's gender identity. And so many of them leave home where they become vulnerable to the economic situation of the country generally. They take to sex work, which is often a gateway for violence and HIV infection, and um, also homelessness. A staggering 86% in our sample said that they have experienced some form of violence. Um, and I think one of the shortcomings of the, of the study was that we, we, we didn't ask people um, where this particular violence manifested. But what we do know from the focus group discussion is that many trans women talked about violence at the institutional level. So it was violence in manifesting in secondary victimization if they tried to report cases. It was also violence in the policy framework of South Africa where we have a gender identity law, but it's not implemented to the extent where trans people can enjoy their full human rights. I.e., if I go into a hospital as a trans woman to access ARV drugs, I will still be called on my male name. I will still be referred to as master. And because we have electronic, gendered electronic filing systems in the hospitals, when my folder is pulled up, it is automatically seen as male, which also provides an entry point for violence. Health and medical issues, 50% of trans women said that they took some form of chronic medication. Another 12% said they, ref they were refused care. Um, the 12% about refusing care always mentioned that as a limitation. I think it's higher than that, but um, for the purposes of this study, we found that trans self-reporting, um, trans women said that we have been refused care um, in terms of accessing medical health. 50% is taking some form of chronic medication. Again, our assumption there is um, it could be either ARVs or 